What up, rock stars? Welcome to the first episode of the You Are The Rock Star Show. I have an epic show for you planned today with a special guest. His name is Josh Devine, and he played drums in a band called One Direction, selling out arenas all over the world. He's gonna share with you some really cool things that he learned from touring the globe and achieving his dreams through mindful practices, playing drums, martial arts, and overcoming a limiting mindset um, and self-doubt. So I hope you're ready. It's gonna be an awesome show today, so thanks so much for tuning in. Since this is the first episode, I just wanna cue you guys in on what this show is about. And this show is about stepping into your power and living your purpose. It's about becoming the rock star of your own life meeting challenges as opportunities, things to grow through so we can become better. Right now we're experiencing tremendous uncertainty in the world and in our everyday lives. And when that happens, things can get really hectic. We can start to lose control and our mental health can suffer and other things can just come up and knock us off our game. That's why I wanna have organic conversations about what it means to be the rock star of your own life. I know it's difficult and challenging, but right now it's really, really important that we learn how to treat others with respect and kindness, which is what Josh is going to share with you along with some really, really epic mindful techniques. So get ready and enjoy. I know you started playing drums when you were like three, right? Yeah. Yeah. So from the time when you were like three up until when you went and tried out for 1D, was there anything that crept up in regards to like holding you back belief system wise that you had to overcome to, to step into that and to kind of like do one of the most epic things ever and tour the world for sold out arenas everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, absolutely, man. It's like, for, I mean, you know, when you're a kid, the world does, you know, the world just happens around you and you're focused on whatever you're focused on. And for me, it was just always music. It was, it was always just, I'm going to do this one day. Like, you know, I constantly teachers would say to me constantly, like, you'd be amazing in school if you just tried hard. Mm. And I didn't have the heart just to say to them, well, I don't want to try hard because I know what I'm going to do. So I always believed, Hey, I'm going to do something. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be able to, you know, be a, be a musician. I'm going to change, hopefully change the world with the gift I have. And in my opinion, the only thing I'm really good at, so I'm like, this is my voice. My voice is banging things really loud. So I'm like, you know, this is what I'm going to do. But along the way, of course, man, there's like uh, one time I can actually very, very remember in particular. So I'd played drums since three till how old would I been? Yes, uh, yeah, five, I think, which means I would have been about 10, okay. probably. Um, and we had a school production, like a school play. I went to like a uh, a small kind of like, primary school like elementary school as a kid um wasn't like hundred i think there's like a couple hundred kids in the whole school it was crazy uh, but we did like this big production in year five it was like the big thing where all the parents will come all the other kids in the school will come and you put on this like big big thing and it was like took up so much of our time in in school which is brilliant so we all thought we we're having a break but we weren't we were like learning different other stuff and for one of the bits myself and another boy uh, who just been playing drums, I think for two years, uh, were asked to play drums and we were meant to do like a little solo piece each and then like a big whole thing together. And I had been self-taught up until that point and uh, he had had lessons for two years. So I get down on the kit and I'm like, you know, I've just shredded my whole life. I've just always hit everything and enjoyed it and got into rhythm, but I've had like a natural ability. And then here comes this kid who had played for two years, been taught how to read, to a degree and sat there and read his music and it was mind blowing. Mm. I remember at the time I was thinking, people are gonna laugh at me. I'm gonna play and people are gonna go, oh, that's cute. But that kid, he's got something. And throughout that whole year, I was just like, you know, it, it does, it makes you wanna, I mean, it's so stupid. There's always gonna be competition. But when you're a kid where you are like the only person that's been doing this and then someone else comes up and they're good, you kind of think, oh, okay, I need to, be, I need to be, be, be better. But as I was teaching myself, there was only so much I, can, I could learn. And um, that was the first time I'd ever experienced with drumming, where I was like, okay, am I really good enough to do this? Like, should I just stop? You know, I want to play soccer instead. Should I just go and do that? Or should I just do something else one day? Should I be a fireman or should I look after reptiles? or some, Something like completely different. And of course, the, the show came around 
I did okay, I think. He did his piece that was scripted that was incredible. Like he, he played it so well, so perfect. But instead of, it was just one thing I've always been very, very good at. And I don't want to ever sound like I'm like, you know, bigging myself up or giving myself a big head or anything. I've always been able in my mind to go, okay, cool. Like you play your hand, it's good. Okay, cool. I can see it's incredible. You've worked very hard. I'm like, okay, cool. So instead of letting it eat me alive, being like, damn, I need to be better. It just pushes me on to try and be better. Mm -hmm. And music, I've, I've come, you know, later in, on in life, you get, you realize it's not a competition. It's never been a competition. You know, uh, being the best in the world, it, there's no such thing. I'm sure there are kids in the world that are six years old that can probably groove and play way harder than I can. Like, you know, for all of us, some of the best musicians in the world, there'll be someone somewhere that will destroy any lick they've got, any chop, any anything. And that's okay. Mm. It's just like, okay, I just figured out, okay, I'll be the best that I can be. And then, you know, no matter what, I'm always just, I'm, I've, I've put my heart and soul into it. And, and that's all you can do is just, is just do your best. So that was a way that I figured out early. I was like, you know what? I can doubt myself all I want, but all that's going to do is stunt me and it's going to stop me and I'm not going to grow. And in my mind, I'm like, well, if I just stop here, then I've failed. Then I've, I've, you know, I've not explored something to its full potential. And I'm the kind of person that it's zero or a hundred. <laughs> like if I get into something, if I'm like, really, I'm not just like, Oh, cool. I enjoy this. I'm like obsessed with this thing mm. and it will become something that I become so passionate about in life. And yeah, I just feel like that to me is the only way that I can get through doubt because there's going to be a lot of doubt for any industry and any person, especially now right. with the internet and everything. It's like, you know, if you ever want to get, get good at something, you just need to go on YouTube, type in what it is and you'll see a bajillion other people that are just incredible. And it's going to be, you know, it's like it can torment you inside or you can be like, okay, cool. I want to be up there with those guys. I want to, you know, I want to find out what my maximum potential is in this. And uh, yeah, so there were definitely times, but it's uh, very thankfully I've managed to pull through um, and I've never been too discouraged to the point where I've thought like, you know, screw this, F this, I'm out. Right. You know? Well, it, it reminds me of, um, you know, the relationship we have within, because I really feel like when we compare ourselves, we fall into that judgment zone to where we start mm -hmm. feeling like we're not good enough. And unfortunately, a lot of social media breeds that right now. Um, and that's, you know, how we consume a lot of content. So it's easy to fall into that, com like that comparative nature, which makes us feel all yeah. inferior, like your life's not good enough or you're not good enough. And that's why I love, you know, meditating and yoga so much is because it helps you to sift through to realize what is the truth for you and what's real while mm -hmm. developing the relationship you have within, because to be real, I mean, that, that's what we got. That's like the most important thing we have is the relationship with ourselves. And the more that we realize that, the more it's like, how you're talking, you know, you had that kid when you were in year five, who was, who was, you know, playing unconsciously to this chart. Um, but then when you tap into you realizing that what you give off is a completely unique vibration, a completely unique expression, just by being you, mm -hmm. then you could go up against like the most ridiculous drummers in the world. But as long as you are yourself, yeah. that is going to be the authentic version of you. And like kind of reflecting it back on the book I wrote is kind of like, well, mm. it's kind of like you're being the rock star of your own life by yeah. developing the relationship with yourself. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and it just, it, it feels a lot better because then you don't have to be something you're not, which I think yeah. is really important to embrace, right? It's like, it's like who you yeah. are is enough. And the more that we tap into our unique creative ability by doing things that make us feel alive, things that make us like salivate at the mouth and just like be weird and just embrace it the more. It just yeah. feels damn good. And you don't have to worry about being compared to other people because you're just being you mm. and there's no one else that's going to be like you, right? There's no one that's going to be able yeah. to hit the drums just like you. There's, there's, it's yeah. just not possible as much as you might like any of us might think that like, we're not good enough or there's more, there's like more people in the world that are way better. Like that's just an illusion. And the more that we sift through mm. the illusion using practices like meditation and yoga or even yeah. finding flow states, the more we realize, I think that like authentic self-expression that we all possess. So I guess I'm just like wondering also like, for anyone who's wondering, what kind of practices did you use to kind of get more into your authentic voice, your authentic expression? Was it, was it routine based? Is it like a daily routine still? Or was it, you know, comfortability with your, with your drum set? Was it more just kind of like 
tuning in and seeing like, this feels good or this doesn't feel good. What was mm. that process like for you? Kind of all of the above, really. Okay. It, it, it all kind of factored in for me personally. Uh, it was, it was definitely routine of like practicing and, and, and I mean, I mean, more than anything, it was just the genuine sheer love of what I was doing. Like I could do it for a living or I could play for fun with, with my friends or I could go to the pub and just jam out on open mic nights. The thrill that music gives me and being able to play my drums, just, just, just drums is enough for me. Like that, that was like, you know, it, it was never a chore. It was fun. It was something that I just enjoyed. And I feel like that's so important to find inner peace with yourself, with whatever you're doing, you know, it's the right thing. And you know, this is something good and something brilliant that you can just get lost in if you're just super passionate about it. And, um, you know, I know, I know people that have the same thing with even, even stranger things like, like mixed martial arts, MMA sports, different thing, you know, these people that are like, they live and breathe this thing and they find their own like particular flow and their own voice through this because it's all hard work, determination, practice, but it's all regimented. Um, uh, what's, what's, what's what I'm looking for? Routine. You know, you like routine based. Kind of. Routine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all like a very big routine thing. Um, and I just found for me, like music's always been a way that I can just get lost mm. and I can always, no matter what I can, Someone could probably listen to me play the drums when I'm like really in the zone and go, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> like, but, but, but in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm expressing myself. However, you know, it may not be conventional. It may not be the most like, you know, oh, this, this guy was locked in at 140 BPM from the start to the finish of this exact phrase. Like, you know, um, but it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. I feel like with with routine i thrive on routine just just in general i i suck at like planning i mean non like not planning things if i don't have stuff written down and i don't have things planned and i don't have things set i i do this i'll find a million other reasons not to do whatever i'm meant to do mm -hmm. <laughs> so i feel like just routine for everything just really helps to like it just resonates with me perfectly um but I just found also just, just for like mental state is such a huge important thing, especially in, 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 in our industry. But even when you're learning, when you're growing, when you're trying to express and find your voice, having the right time just to be like, relax, let go, every, let go of everything else, leave everything at the door and just come, just be one with your thoughts, one with your body, one with your mind mm. and just let whatever happens happen. That is when I do my best work. That is when I, I, write what I'm meant to write. I play what I'm meant to play. If I pick up a guitar or a bass, I'll sit there and, and what's almost what's meant to be will be. Whatever happens, happens. And I'm like, okay, this is how my body and my soul and everything's feeling. These are the words and, you know, I'm, I'm not a great lyricist or anything. I've, I, I very much struggle putting anything into words, as you can probably tell, because I'm rambling on about everything. <laughs> no. So like, but I like, music and expression and, and things that that is my words that that's my living being you know and it's it's it was different playing for someone like one direction who have a load of songs who you're then just like you know you're effectively playing really well written pop songs that's not me that that that's not my inner voice i can like combine with it and when whenever we play live i'll put my flair on it and it's like people can listen and say like oh you know i I hear what you're doing and, and there'll be days when I'm thrashing the hell out of it. And they're like, you have a good day. Are you okay? Like, is everything all right? <laughs> and then there's other days when I'm just like, you know, having a blast up there and you can tell. Um, whereas when it's with your own music or just when you're on your own practicing or something, it's, it's almost just like an extension of yourself. Like you become, it sounds so cheesy, but you like become one with the instrument, you know, it becomes a part of your body. The sticks become a part of your arms. The drum kit becomes a part of your body and you are literally speaking as if it's one big voice, mm. it's just really, really loud. And um, I think that's a, it, it's just a beautiful place to be in. And yeah, but it's, it was very much um, like, you know, had to be all, all structured and everything. Otherwise I just never would have done it. I'm just useless. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's normal. I think, I think like, at least for me, that's like part of my, you know, my illusion of normal is that you know, routine is really important for me. You know, like my yoga practice, my meditative practice, my making a list of what I need to do every day. If I don't do it, then I'm kind of, you know, 
grabbing at straws, trying to feel like I know what's going on. I don't feel like I'm able to operate from a grounded place. And, uh, mm. and so the, I'm a huge routine advocate as well. One of the things I kind of want to piggyback off of what you were saying is that it really sounds like what you're talking about is a flow state, um, a state yeah. of being rather than doing, you know? So like while we mm -hmm. make our to-do lists of things we have to do, I think it's important to maybe even put at the top of our to-do list and I'll do this sometimes. I'll just write, remember to be present, right? Mm. And just to be. And so, because sometimes I'll get caught up in my to-do list and put being happy on the, like at the end of it, after I get all my stuff done, then I'll be happy, mm -hmm. you know? And so many times there's like other things at play, you know, like whether you're on tour and you don't know like where your next meal's coming or what you're going to eat or like what the next show is going to be like, you know, yes. or what these connecting flights across the world are going to be like, you just don't really know. And that's where our routine and our foundation can keep us solid and keep us grounded. And then from there, I really feel like the more that we develop consistently from this grounded place, whether it's a meditative practice, playing drums, doing something that involves like physical movement and then attaching mm -hmm. the breath to it, we start to enter more of a flow state. And so I really feel like what you were kind of referring to, you know, like this, this feeling that's, it's not too trippy whatsoever. Um, it's, it's like, you're not thinking you're being, and you're, yeah. you're, you're one, you're experiencing this oneness that people all over the world experience, usually doing like physical activities, but you can experience it through met through meditations and things yeah. um, mm -hmm. that's awesome. called the flow state. So I'm just wondering a little bit more specifically, did you ever find yourself really focused on your breath while you were playing drums? I mean, while you are playing drums, of course, like, like, is, is it ever something that like you think about, or is it something that you naturally just do? Because I think a lot of people could use that as a, a tool to like unlock mm. things, you know what I mean? And I think especially other musicians out there or just anyone who's, who's trying to, who's going through it mentally and wants to experience more of a presence, more of a flow state in their life. I think they could benefit from hearing like any type of breath work practice or anything you might do, or, or maybe it's just more natural, but, uh, mm. but can you share some light on that? Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny cause I'm, I, I guess it comes, it comes naturally. It's something that I've been kind of working on probably I'd say over the last three years, something that I've been becoming aware of. Um, mainly actually, I started doing um, uh, mixed martial arts. I started training for, for, for a lot of uh, MMA stuff. And uh, that was the one thing at the gym that I was training at was uh, all about, it. it's called the way of no way. It's, it's very much the same thing of like, you know, there's, there's not one right answer. There's a million other paths to get to your happiness, but you've got to find your voice and find you. And they would always say, it's all about your breathing. Everything's about your breathing to get into this flow state. And they would always talk about this flow state and breathing. And, you know, you listen to it and you're like, flow state, oh, have I ever been in that? Like, of course, like as a musician, I've been in that. I, I get into that all the time. The drums are the gateway for me to get into this. And when you realize like, how do I do this and how do I get into it? When you start doing something else, you're like, oh, breathing. Everything is breathing. Everything's focusing on your breath. I mean, they always say, you know, if you're getting stressed or you're panicking, slow down, breathe in deep, focus on your breath or you can't sleep. But, you know, get quiet, get comfortable, focus on your breathing. There's something in us as human beings that when we just breathe, I mean, it's literally, the, you know, we don't think about breathing daily. It's just something we naturally always do. But when you literally break it down and think, you know, I'm going to take a minute to just sit and calm and, and, and chill and you focus on your breathing, something happens. And like, I'm, I'm not very mentally sure of what it all is. I know you, you know so much about this, but it's like the feeling you get is that weird, take you to a different place. You're present, you're with yourself. And you know, like I said, other things come up. You kind of think about things you haven't thought about in years and years and years. And I found drumming, when I got into my flow state, I could be playing in front of 85, 90,000 people. And I will suddenly be so locked into the moment that I'm not knowing what I'm doing. I'm just, it's on autopilot, I'm just flowing. But I'll think about something that I said to somebody 10 years ago, that was like, when I look back and I go, how the hell did I ever say that to a living being? Oh, wow. That's horrible. And I feel like, feel horrible. And I'm like, and then you work through things. I'm like that. <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know if that is like a normal thing in flow state, but man, that happens to me every single time I sit and I breathe, I think of something that I could have done better in my life or 
things that I didn't even realize must have affected me in a certain way. Mm. And it comes out and you deal with it. And afterwards you kind of feel like, wow, that wasn't just a physical exercise. My brain was just being exercised here. And, 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 you know, before you know it, you've finished a whole show and you've gone, where the hell did that time go? That, that's, that's really <laughs> weird. But, but it's weird. I've never really thought about it. Like, as a as a whole thing but yeah it's, it's just something i've naturally done but i'm trying to be more aware of it and i tried to do yoga um it was i tell you what man i've been punched in the face elbow in the face dropped on my head uh <laughs> knee in the face choked out more times than i can count dude doing yoga hurt my body more than all of that and i was just like it was one of the most incredible feelings um and i have friends that, that go and they get into this spiritual state where their whole life changes and i've had i've had friends of mine that you know live a certain way start getting into yoga and not just for the exercise but they start getting into the spiritual aspect of it and it's like they have an awakening and it's like they come and they go it's uh, you know it's almost like they've visited somewhere else they've gone i literally i don't like who are we right who am i who are you? and it's so like weird but it's amazing and i'm like okay this is all, but yeah, it, it, it all starts with the breathing and, and it's just something that I need to really get more into. Which I feel like cool. there's a lot in it. For sure. And it's one of those things where, you know, a lot of people say, you know, either I can't do yoga or I can't meditate and all these things. And, you know, I'm just a firm believer that, you know, if you can breathe, you can meditate. And if you can breathe, mm. you can do yoga. Um, realistically, what we're talking about is deepening of connection, like we mentioned before, to where the yeah. breath unlocks more of a flow state, but it can be mm -hmm. achieved in multiple ways. Um, what you were saying was just so deep and just want to kind of shed some more light on that. Um, because, you know, when we enter this meditative state, this flow state, a lot of times stuff comes up and, and there's this, this idea that we become the watcher, the watcher of ourselves, of our thoughts, mm -hmm. of our body. And, and in doing so, we then stop taking things so personal and then stuff comes up to where you might have an experience where you're not thinking at all, you're just being and you're in flow and all of a sudden something that happened 10 years ago, a conversation pops up and, and like, why is that, right? And so I don't personally know exactly why, but I really feel like it's because you're going through a healing process by observing yourself. And it's, mm. it, it, it's called like you're being the watcher, right? And, and, and so you're watching yourself from almost, almost this like, you know, out of body experience slightly. Yeah. Because flow state is just so much of just you surrendering to what is. And it, I mean, it's, I'm just reflecting literally what you said. Yeah. It's so beautiful because, because the more that we practice this, the more that those experiences we might have, you know, pushed down or depressed the energy that we push down, like maybe having a conversation we weren't proud of or acting a certain way, the more that we, we tap into that for our own healing and, and our own healing purposes, which then inc increases our awareness of ourself. And then we have, I believe, what people consider a spiritual awakening. Is awakening that, yeah. it's, it's, just, it's a deepening of our awareness of ourself and, and realizing yeah. that the, the illusion of who we are, because you know, we subscribe to all sorts of illusions um, and a lot of them are ones that hold us back. But the more that we can watch ourselves and not take things so personally and, and realize that, you know, the whole world is way bigger than us and we're a part of it and how we work on ourselves directly reflects the world that we're in, making it really important to do our best to reach our highest excitement, which is a lot of times these flow states, right? Like when we follow things we love, whether it's mixed martial arts, music, playing on stage, touring we start to tap into this higher vibration of our own personal experience. And in that comes, an awakening, which can be very spiritual because the awakening is really just an awareness of ourself, I think, which is so beautiful. So I appreciate you for sharing that. Cause it's just, you know, it's one of those things that I don't think enough people can hear because mm. it's not, it's not this super crazy esoteric thing. It's, it's something we all have within our possession, the more that we follow what we're passionate about and then yeah. continue to stay in the routine of getting to know ourselves, getting to know our practice, learning ways that feel good for us to express. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden we start to have almost like these weird, we're watching our self experiences yeah. and, and it's important to go with them, you know? And um, I was wondering, so like um, daily practices, do you still do martial arts? Or are you mostly like in drumming or like, what is your daily practice like 
like, like when you wake up, like what's your kind of routine that you're in right now during this really like uncertain time period? Well, consider what we, so we just, just came back to the UK from, from, from Los Angeles. So my routine in LA was a lot different to now. Um, mainly because coming back to, back to this country, we have to have a 14 day quarantine. So there's literally a, not much we can do. I've actually been staying on a boat. Me and, me and my missus have been staying on a boat to like keep yeah, away from the families and not, and not get anyone sick. I mean, we're fine. We actually come out of it tomorrow. Um, so my routine has been a lot different now and there's been a few hardships and stuff here that, that we've been dealing with. And, um, but usually like throughout the whole of quarantine and, and, and lockdown, my routine has been just try and keep my mind active, try and keep my body active because I'm sure most people that, you know, have been furloughed from work or, or not been able to go into work for whatever reason have probably seen this and gone, I get to be a couch potato now for, for a month and get paid. This is great. Whereas for people in our position as touring musicians, this is like, Oh, there's no gigs going on. There's no sessions. I'm not getting paid. Like, you know, we still got to eat. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to, you know, while I haven't been able to work, I've been just trying to keep physically fit. So we'll usually wake up and Holly, forces me to go on a run with her which is brutal <laughs> but you always feel amazing afterwards and then I hit the gym and I just always have to have a bit of time where I'm doing something physical because I feel my best when I'm doing and done something physical mm -hmm. whether that's um any type of martial art which I haven't actually been able to do for a little bit of time um just down to an injury on my hand so it was it was kind of uh I've had to figure out other ways to do it but I'm a physical person if mm -hmm. I you know I, I, I play rough whenever I'm with, with my friends here, we'll play soccer, but we beat each other up. Like it's, <laughs> this is our language. And this is how I feel my best is when we are physical, when I'm doing something, using my body, I'm just a very physical person, but it sometimes means that I kind of miss a lot of the mental side of it. And the time just to stop, reflect, sit down and just chill and be one with your thoughts. I usually just think, you know, go, 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 go. Yeah. So I don't ever think about it. And, uh, so I've been really trying to take the time over in LA, especially we'd go and drive to the beach um, every other day and just go and sit in front of the ocean, in front of the biggest body of water we could find. There's something so connecting and grounding about being in front of water. And I actually have a friend who said anytime he is in front of any water, he just sits and meditates. And people always look and go like, oh, why are you some like hippie wannabe guru? You know, <laughs> you sit there and go, it's like no like he just sits there and he just breathes and he just watches and i've for the last couple of years that's all i've done I'll, I'll, I'll always go i've always got got music on the go so i you know i'll sit there for a minute and just take 10 minutes to just listen to the waves listen to a crash here we can't really do that so i just kind of sit and stare at the trees um, and yeah. we're very blessed that uh holly's parents who who taken over the house uh, has got a gorgeous backyard so there's there's a lot of space a lot of time that we can just do exercise stuff and just sit and just look at the beauty of like life and yeah it's that's just kind of the routine now it's just you know there's a lot of nothing to do so we're just trying to keep ourselves busy and and, and grounded and uh yeah just try and not not get stale because you can get so stale so easily and especially when you look on the news and look on social media i just tweeted today about it i was like I, you know, I'm sick of seeing all this toxic stuff. Like, can people not just be kind once a day, just tweet something kind or put something yeah. on Instagram kind, because I'm sick of seeing it bothers me. It makes me angry. I see people on both sides or whatever the argument is, and they're both horrible to each other. And I'm like, man, first of all, they'd never say it to each other's face if they were in a room together. Let's be real. Right. The second one, just like, why put all this negative energy or hate or just bad vibes out, out in the world? There's enough shit that we've got to deal with as a as people as human race as whatever why add to it and that's just been my kind of question for the last couple of weeks is what can i do now to try and be the most positive influence to the people that follow me and to the people that care what i have to say and i'm just like you know this is this is all something that i find when i'm just quiet enough for a minute and i sit and i just reflect and chill and think you know I'm very proud of what I've done in my life, but it, none of it means anything at all. All the achievements I've made and the things I'm very proud of, they're great, but it's like, who cares? At the end of the day, who cares if I'm not doing something positive and if I'm not, you know, I could earn a bazillion dollars 
live in the biggest house in the world, drive all the nicest cars and, and all that, but what's that going to get me? Like, we're all going to end up, you know, in a hole in the ground one day. <laughs> it's, it's a weird thought because people, too many people chase the dream of like, I want to hit the next tax bracket, I want to hit the next milestone, I want to have the next car, the next house. And I just feel like it's, I'm just, I figured out over this whole period of, of, of six months, I'm like, you know what, if I lost everything, as long as I have my relationships, as long as I have the love of my friends and family, and as long as I can honestly look back and just say, I'm doing the best I can to be a positive force and light, even if it's just one other person that listens and cares what I have to say, man, I'm winning. I can go and stack shelves in Ralph's for the rest of my life and I'm winning, I'm happy. And I think that's, that's a place where I feel like I'm, I'm starting to really long to be in is just provide happiness. And I feel like we can do that, you as well as a musician, Mm. we provide escapes for people uh you know especially i mean like man i'm such a big fan of your band like there's so many songs and so, so many like for years and years and years that i'll listen to and i'll go like man this song just speaks to me mm. and you get lost in it for a minute and then you're like you know four minutes has gone by and you're like okay cool like you know i that, that gave me a time just to like escape my world from it, escape all the drama and escape it and just think feel and just be lost and i'm like that is life that is what everything's about and i feel like we are both very very blessed to be able to be people that can kind of you know bring that to other people and kind of serve other people in a way um totally yeah this has just been all my random thoughts as i've been going through it all but that's Sounds that's really, what routine like has got a spiritual me. awakening to me bro <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I, I feel like so many people need to hear that, especially um, the reflections of, you know, your movement practice along with the meditative side of things and then enjoying mm -hmm. nature, um, especially right now because of everything going on that, you know, we, it's crazy. Like you said, a lot of people are sharing negative stuff. We're naturally drawn to negativity for some reason. So yeah. what can we do? And, you know, a lot of times it's difficult to sit still and to reach a meditative spot, but physical practices allow for that, you know, that like, crazy monkey that's like roided out kind of like shaking the bars now it used to be like kind of a chill monkey and now it's like roided out because we got social media and news and everything yeah. at our fingertips with our phone so now we got to give it something more to focus on is the way i think about it so now it's like instead of just giving it you know a banana we got to kind of give it the full bushel of bananas in the form of some kind of physical practice that will yeah. allow our mind something to focus on so we can reach more of a meditative state and start to practice eventually being able to sit so you know like you were saying with your routine of running with being very physical i know a ton of people can relate to that because you know it just it gets your feel-good hormones going on and then it allows yeah. you you know a peace of mind you feel good in your body and then it's easier to reach a state where you can sit and you can just be it's difficult for a lot of people to just sit and be um but when we do that and we combine it with nature it becomes this really epic and super positively potent force that yeah. allows us to connect to what's really important. And a lot of the stuff that you just <laughs> said is so important for so many people to hear. So I really appreciate you sharing it because yeah. it's reflecting on what actually is important. Like, like we get caught up in the illusion so much of having to be more and having to get this, having to do that. And when it comes down to it, like, what's the point of it? The point yeah. is, I believe to experience love and to share that unconditionally and to be a positive reflection, even if it's just one person, like that was my, that, that was my intention with my book. I was like, if this impacts mm -hmm. one person in a positive way, it, that's a success for me. You want right? Because that's what it is. And it's the same way with the music. It's like, if this positively impacts somebody to either, you know, take charge of their life, to not take their life, to, you know, step up into an, a, a new experience, to take a shift, to do anything that's positive, then that's a win. And, yeah. and I think that's something that everyone needs to embrace because it's not a matter of if you have, you know, a massive following or if you have one person you talk to today at the supermarket or when you're walking yeah. down the street, you can make a positive impact that can make ripples throughout time with you just being a nice, kind human being. <laughs> right? Dude, it's as simple as that. It's just, it's just taking the time sometimes, as you said at the beginning, just to listen. To not, you know, someone can have a complete opposite view to you. Just take the time to listen and say, okay, like, talk to me. Tell me how you feel. Tell me, you know, I, I, I'm just going to, I want to listen to you. I want to listen to what you have to say. And it's just something we are not doing 
as a society, as a whole, no one's listening. Everyone is talking. Everyone is telling me, you need to do this. And I, I always go back to the same analogy of like, like I grew up, I grew up in like a, a, going to like a religious school, like a Christian school, in like a Christian household. And so many of the values I just, I love and adore. But then you get the, the people that will go and stand with pickets on the street corner in, in Hollywood saying, repent, you're all going to hell. Mm. And that, that, that to me is someone saying, hey, you're wrong. I don't care what you believe. I don't care what you've got to say. I'm telling you, this is what it is. And you're wrong. You cannot change my mind. I condemn you. Mm. And I'm just like, you know what? If the world had less of that and more just an open civil discussion of like, hey, like, let's chat. Let's just, let's just break bread together for a minute. Like, mm-hmm. how, how do you feel? Oh, I, I don't agree, but I'm willing to learn and listen to your point of story. Game changer. Right. Absolute game changer. Um, and I just feel like we just need, we need more of that. And I feel like the more people that, that really try and find themselves and wake up and find their reason why, Mm. their reason why they wake up in the morning and do what they do the real reason i feel like that is going to be a game changer for people and and that will be you know such a, a, a like a spiritual awakening if you can figure out your reason why it's that's just like that's a huge a huge thing that's just been something i've been thinking of as well but right. sorry diverged off the conversation but i apologize i don't know that's right on with the conversation bro that's that's something that's so deep that a lot of spiritual um spiritual and motivational speakers I listen to you talk about is, you know, you can overcome crazy circumstances, which what are we experiencing right now? We're experiencing something that's been completely unique to our generation, um, to all generations. And there's a lot of uncertainty and uncertainty can keep us in this weird, you know, figure eight of like being like sad or angry or depressed or frustrated. And it's hard to, to get over that. But when we start to, you know, ask the questions of like, what is my purpose here? What is it that I'm passionate about? What is it that I can do that's a positive impact in the world? Then this, this natural awakening that you're talking about starts to happen mm. because we start to realize the power we have, what's really important, what the things are near and dear to our heart that we're willing to share. And when we do that unapologetically being ourself, other people are naturally drawn to us. And, mm. and, and it becomes a very, very positively connecting force, I believe. And so whether that's somebody okay. picketing on the side or whether that's somebody like expressing themselves in another modality, um, the more that we do that, while at the same time having compassion and willing to understand other people, we like do some serious, serious up-leveling. And I think evolution, yeah. because that's what we're kind of like gearing up towards right now and how we need to remember the positiveness that like that we we embrace like and I, I know it sounds kind of trippy hippie a little bit but it's like when we choose to embrace the things that are meaningful to us then the world stops happening to us and um it starts happening for us and i love I, that you know that's a great that's a great saying yeah i mean it's it's some people, you know, obviously we're all faced with different circumstances. Um, yeah. I just, you know, I'm a believer that like the ones that are coming up are to make us stronger. And mm-hmm. this is a worldwide one right now that's here to, I think, increase our awareness and stand more firmly in our beliefs while at the same time mm-hmm. hearing other people's. But then also realizing that like, hey, I'm not going to settle for someone, you know, saying some stuff that I feel is like not necessarily in alignment i will listen for sure yeah. i'm not going to speak to try and change your mind but i'm also not just going to tolerate some crazy stuff that i don't necessarily think is a part of um you know like like a truth right because we can have different opinions and i think we can hold space for people's different opinions but i think yeah. we have to really ask ourselves what the meaning that we want to bring to the world is and what the truth we want to embrace is while still being able to hold space for people to stand in their own opinion and their own truth not holding judgment but realizing that it's way bigger than us and you know way bigger than us way bigger than us and and the more that we awaken like you're talking about every day to what's important the more that awakening starts to, you know, permeate different areas of the world by us having a conversation with this person, conversation with this person, because people remember how you made them feel in a conversation, you know? So if, if you can hold space for someone and just be, and, and by hold space, I just mean like can create an, an, an interaction that someone mm-hmm. leaves feeling good about, 
then that's a game changer in my opinion. Even if you have different belief systems, whether you're on the right or the left or in the middle or like in space or underground, I don't know. It's like, it's like if you can hold a, if you can hold a, a connected conversation from not judgment and love while, yeah. while embracing your own personal opinion, but understanding other people might have a different one, then that's a gift right there. And then whatever mm -hmm. you do to create um, from that awareness, you know, whether it's like music or something like that, just knowing that, you know, you could be wrong, but yeah. either way, it's important to keep showing up and to keep asking those questions. Like you were asking, like, what is the point of it? What's the point of yeah. all this? If, if we're going to leave this body at some point, nothing's for sure. Like nothing is for sure. Nothing's for certain. We could leave the, we could leave our bodies today or tomorrow. And yeah. like, it's exactly. weird, right. But, but, but what's really important and are we willing to continue to see other people and to show up with integrity, honor and grace and non-judgment and love and be able to share compassion and kindness with other people through yeah. our forms of expression. And sometimes just through a simple conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, that's the thing, man. And, and, and just to, just to reiterate on my, on, on my thing as well, I, I don't see, obviously there's nothing wrong with, with, with wanting the best things and, and wanting a big house and wanting, you know, all the money in the world. And there's, there's some beauty in that too, you know, having the reflection of your hard earned work, having something to touch and to, and, and tell, to say like, look what I did. I managed to make, you know, I, I got this for myself. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that's also super important. I just want to make sure that, that I wasn't saying like, nah, none of this, nothing like this matters. Cause it really does. Like, you know, right. Well, money is not happiness, but it makes right. it, it definitely helps to keep comfortable, you know? Totally. And like, there is a level of, you know, certain like certainty that money yeah. provides sometimes that will help with, feelings of, of happiness. Right. But once you get past that threshold, that's when you yeah. start realizing like, oh, okay, like what is the illusion I'm choosing to operate in? And yeah. I think, mm -hmm. I think how we can navigate um, the negative illusions is by asking what is the positive thing that we wish to do with, with what we're going after. Right. So it's not just about, you know, going after all the money or going after all the, you know, the big house or the big car. Yeah. It's like, that's cool to have. And it's amazing to have nice things. And it's amazing. Like everyone deserves to be balling out in my opinion. So I think yep. it's important to ask the questions, what are we going to do with what we have that mm -hmm. when we're balling out, how are we going to change the world? Cause exactly. that's really what it comes down to. Right. I mean, I think we're given, you know, this experience as humans, which is, you know, being humans pretty wild to be fair, especially yeah. right now. Um, we're given this experience to, to serve, I think, and to help yeah. other people and we can want all the things but and there's nothing wrong with wanting all the things that's great it's as long yeah, as yeah. we stay aware that that wanting all the things in itself is an illusion not a bad mm -hmm. one but it's an illusion that if we have more money or more things we can everything's impact, gonna be okay everything's gonna be okay and we can impact more people and yeah, so one yeah. of my coaches lisa nichols she's a legend she was speaking in uh, in that movie the secret and she's a she's an epic yeah. author. She's, she's a professional speaker amazing woman and she reflects the same thing. You know, it's like, it's not about, you know, all the stuff we got. It's about how can you use it to impact more people? Because there's nothing wrong with being a millionaire. There's nothing wrong with being a billionaire, to be fair. And like, th there's so much negative stigma with people that have money. I feel like there's nothing wrong with having a lot of money. It's what you choose to do with it. Because money's a resource. It's like, it's, it, it really is. It, it's a resource and it allows us, if we choose to let it, to impact more people in a positive way. And so getting yeah. clear with that intention before we get all these things or while we're going after mm -hmm. them, whether that's, you know, you, you gain a massive social media following. It's like, okay, what's my intention? How do I want to share? And you're saying from kindness, from compassion and how I can make a positive difference by sharing even just one kind thing a day makes yeah. a difference. And, and, and I, I think everyone benefits from hearing you say that. So I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that because it's such, it's such a necessary thing with the uncertainty that we're experiencing right now. Um, just a level of kindness that we can realize, Hey, it's not about us and them. It's about <laughs> what, what we can do to up level yeah. each other. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just all about, all about lifting. I mean, the only thing I, I say every single day, whenever anyone asks me about anything, I just say, we're all in this together. Life, we are all in this game. We're not against each other. Yeah, there's friendly competition. There's certain things people need to be better at and other things I get it. But we are all in life together. So why hinder each other? Let's just lift each other up, you know? Like, we don't know what other people are going through. Lift everyone up. You come into contact with someone, just be nice. 
Mm -hmm. You never know, you know, you don't know what people have been going through that, that, that day. One smile to someone in the supermarket when you're buying your veg and you go and pick up a cucumber and she picks up a cucumber and you just look and go, you know, hey, walk off. That sometimes can be like, oh, I'm not used to people smiling at me randomly. Mm. And it's like, that, that can be just a, 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 a nice little thing. And, I, and I'm a firm believer of that. Like, you know, you just, we're all going through it together. Just be cool. Totally. love each other, love on everyone. And, and, you know, hopefully people will do the same back, but even if they don't, as long as you are still, you know, being that one positive influence, then, you know, that's one less thing of shit people have to deal with. Right. And I love that. Me too. Me too. Well said. And I think the more that we work on ourselves, <laughs> the less we take it personal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just because yeah, that person that's... waved or didn't say hi or didn't do this, you know, just like you said, it's like everyone's going through their own stuff and we don't know what that is. Um, and, and the more that we develop the, the, the positive conversation with ourselves through things like even time in nature or meditating or finding our flow state, doing something we're passionate about, the more we develop the relationship with us and the less we take yeah. things personal. So then we realize, oh, wow, I'm good today because I, I, I've been working on me. I checked in. I'm good. You're not good. And that's okay. But I'm yeah. not going to take that personal and that be like, oh, it's my fault. You know, yeah. and, and, and that's okay. Cause, cause you, you can still express that kindness and not take things personal if someone's yeah. not reflecting it back to you and, and it's okay. Absolutely. And, and ju just even the same in, in, in our industry, like the amount of negativity, rejection, people in, you know, I mean, hell, you've gone through labels, management and stuff, people, there's a lot of like negative and very cutthroat things. If you just learn to just be like, you know what? It, exactly that. Like, you may be having a really bad day. You may be some big, bad record executive. But you may say some horrible things to me, but cool, man. Like, it's all good, dude. It's all good. I'm still going to, you know, I'm still going to be nice. I'm still going to keep, keep loving on you because I'm happy within myself. Mm -hmm. And no matter what anyone says, I'm like, you know what? I'm cool with me. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters in that thing. If you can look yourself in the eyes and go, you know, I'm all right. I like the person I see back in the mirror. That's such a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. it's one of the deepest things we can experience as humans, that self-acceptance. That's it. Self-acceptance. That is one thing that I feel like the whole world needs to sit back and really meditate on or, or really just have a conversation with themselves about because I feel like there's too many people that just don't get it yeah. and they put themselves down. And that, that to me is just, it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. It's just accept yourself, whatever state you're in, because that's fine. We're all right. broken people, man. We're all broken mm -hmm. people. And that's a beautiful thing, you know? It's beauty. It's beauty in a way, right? So, um, yeah. dude, I appreciate it. I feel like we could we could chat for a lot longer. Maybe we got to do another one of these at some point. Um, dude, anytime, brother. Anytime. It's an honor to uh, an honor to chat to you always. Yeah, well, same. Um, happy to be, um, you know, a space holder and just a reflection, you know, of, uh, you know, of yourself. And I think you, you embody, like, what my entire book's about, and that's meeting <laughs> obstacles as opportunities and yeah. being willing to shift our mindset into, you know, more of a, like a try me mindset of like, Hey, I'm going to go and take it, whether that's go for a run, I'm going to go for, you know, a jog or meditate or go to nature. I'm going to not be complacent and I'm going to go after what it is that I want because actions where the magic happens and yeah. in action is beautiful. And I think you embrace that completely. So I'm really excited to see what you continue to create and how, uh, and how you continue to impact people in a positive way. So thanks for showing up the way that you do brother. And thank you for, uh, for taking the time. Thank you, man. And thank you for uh, helping people figure out they are the rock star in their own lives, man. It's the best, best saying ever, but it's the most truthful saying. So truthful, just keep, right? keep, keep doing you, bro. I love it. Keep stepping into your power and living your purpose one day at a time, the best that you can. Remember your practices, keep laying that foundation each and every day the best you can, and I'll see you soon. Peace.